Welcome, everybody, to The Playbook. I'm your host, Dorian Brown, co-host Tyler Coleman, and today we have Coach Merritt of the John Barrow Bombers. What's going on, Coach? Hey, guys. Great to see you today. Thanks for having me on. Pleasure to have you. Um, through all of this COVID-19, uh, we, we got to be distanced, and um, I think this is a perfect way to help kids get recruited by um, showing their film, having the coaches talk about them, and um, kind of giving like a, uh, a intro to each um, student athlete. Oh, that, that's an incredible opportunity for the kids, for the student athletes. Uh, big props to you guys for doing it. No doubt, no doubt. Um, so we're going to get right into it with the first um, student athlete. We have uh, Chris Pittman, Christian Pittman. Uh, full name. And he played tight end and um, outside linebacker for you, Coach? He's tight end. He's a linebacker. Uh, he's he's big. He's 6'2". He's about 225, 230. Runs pretty well. Uh, and he's a playmaker. You see him there go up, get the interception at the highest point. He's in man coverage, but he dropped back deep, probably about 30 yards on that drop. And then once he gets the ball in his hands, I mean, he's a playmaker. You know, he ran out of gas there. He ran about 75 yards. But once he gets the ball in his hands, uh, again, you see him in coverage, uh, goes up, gets the ball, highest point. He's going to take this one to the house because he only got to go 30 yards, not 70 yards, you know. Right. Um, but the thing about Chris is I love you see him starting off his clips. He's in pass coverage. You know, he closes. He makes a tackle. That's a gain of zero on the shallow. Um, and now you see him here against a heavy run set. Two fullbacks, two tight ends to his side, running his side. He still makes the tackle for a negative one. So he plays the run tough and he plays the pass tough. And that's one of the things we really like about him. One of the things that I saw was he can really rush off the edge too. He can. He can. He's multifaceted, you know, and, and he's his speed is often underestimated. You especially see that as a ball carrier. We'll throw him a bubble screen and guys close on him. And he's so big, they think they don't have to worry. And then whoop, he's gone um, because he does have a sudden burst. Uh, he, he's like a twinkle toes to be as big as he is. Yeah, coach. And um, I'm, I'm going to jump into some offense. I think this is the last defense, the last play. defense to play. Yeah. He's really a sure tackler defensively. You know, he's not a blow you up guy all the time, but he gets you to the ground. Here he is running a little RPO, okay? He gets loose, now that little razzle-dazzle, show you his footwork, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and 10 yards after contact, which you love. Uh, we like to line him up in, in that big power set and just give him a direct snap. And if you're too little, he's going to make you pay. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> if you're too little, he's going to make you pay. And, and that's, that's just the reality of dealing with Christian Pittman. Um, here you see him in the slot. You know, we bring the motion behind him and soften up that side, throw him the quick bubble. You know, he ducks inside, outside. Again, if you're too little, he's going to make you pay and 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 makes seven yards there out of what should be nothing. He loves running that stick route uh, to the outside, makes the catch. He's sure-handed. And then, again, he's faster than you think. You know, that's a four-yard route. All of a sudden, it's a 40-yard play. And that's the really the, the beauty of Chris Pittman. Yeah. Hey, Coach. Hey, Coach, I just want to say one thing. Uh, what was uh, – how was it being able to – transition him from quarterback to the position that you guys have him playing now. Well, How do you a, think he thrived in that this year? I think he really was outstanding. Uh, as a sophomore, he was our quarterback because he had to be. We had to make him do it. And I'll be honest with you, the kid's such a competitor. He loves playing quarterback. He loves having the ball in his hand. Uh, and I told him, and the rest of my coaches did too, we felt like he could be so impactful in the game if we could let him do everything. You know, the quarterback is important, but all he can really do is take the snap, hand it off, or throw it. And you just saw in that 30 seconds of film clip, Chris Pittman could do everything. He can block. He can run the ball. He can receive it. He can tackle. He can make a sack. He can be a pick. He, he can impact the game in so many different ways, uh, and I really thought he was so valuable in that as well. And then as a junior, he gives us tremendous leadership. I can't wait to see what he's going to do next year as a senior. Yeah, coach, I totally agree. I, I've seen him in I've seen him in a lot of different packages, and what stood out to me was his IQ. Mm -hmm. He's a smart kid because he can find the open spots, and he knows how to read 
on the defensive end. That's for sure. Hey, Coach, and I got one more thing about Chris. Um, we want to make sure that when we're doing this, we're telling the coaches what level do you think he will be able to thrive at and what position do you think he will thrive at at the next level as well, too? I think at the next level, he's a defensive player. He's probably a linebacker because what all he could do. Um, he's 6'2". It really, if, if, if football hadn't evolved to where it is, he's really an old-school fullback. He's a perfect fullback for Nebraska in 1994, but that doesn't really exist anymore. If he was six foot six, I'd tell you he's a tight end, no question. At six foot two, I think he's an outside linebacker. Uh, I think he's got a chance to be an FCS guy, depending on the kind of school, especially the academics like the Patriot League or the or the or the Ivy League. If not, he's a D two lock for sure. For sure. And then one last thing, uh, character things. Um, what type of player is he in as far as in the uh, character aspect as well? Oh, too? yeah. And and that's what, you know, every year we have one junior who's a captain. Our coaches choose it uh, so that we always have continuity in our leadership so that our seniors don't all graduate and leave and our team finds itself in the vacuum of leadership. Uh, he was our junior captain, voted unanimously by the coaches. He leads the kids. He's a great kid. He's got great energy, uh, and as talented as he is, still humble. Man, that's what's up. So Christian Pittman, class of 2021. 2021. 2021. 2021. So next we're going to get into – now, I'm, I may need some help, Coach. Oh, Augie. Yeah. Augie, Augie, Augie Nieberly. Augie Nieberly. Yeah. This, this is my dog right here. You talk about a kid who loves to play football. Uh, Augie plays on the line, and he's undersized. You'll see him right here uh, playing at the right guard, okay? And he's just going to use his body. He's going to do whatever he can. He'll take whatever abuse is necessary to make whatever play possible. Now we slide him in the center because he's versatile, okay? Mm. He feels out the backside. Like anybody could just seal that out and be satisfied. All he wants to drive him five mm. yards down. Here he is at center, got called into action against Lutheran North. Big boys coming at him, outweighing him by 100 pounds. Augie knows he got a pass protect. And so he's going to sit in there. He's going to dissipate the bull rush, get us a touchdown on that play because he doesn't let his man through. Now he's at left guard. Okay, you play every position on the line. Um, again, just in there battling every single down. And, and there is not a kid on my team that loves football more than Augie Neighborly. He knows everything. He can do everything. You look at him in his pass protection, he's going to stay attached. He's never going to get a penalty. He's never going to be offside. He's never going to be late for practice. Um, when you talk about level, he's a D3 kid, and, and he's going to be a very good D3 player. The academic schools are all looking at him. Uh, he's looking at places like a Wash U, a University of Chicago, a Carnegie Mellon, a DePaul. Uh, all those schools are very high on him at this point, and, and for good reason. Thing that popped out to me was technique, 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 and footwork. Great footwork. Technique was great. Well, when when you are a hundred ninety pound center and guard, your footwork better be good. Yeah, you and better be. Know that because he he will he will stand in there, you know, and he'll take on the bull rush and he'll get his feet right and he'll get his back in his inverted C and he'll dissipate it and he'll take all the shock into his body and he'll make that sacrifice for a team. It's the ultimate football play. Tyler, you got anything to add to that? Yeah, no, Coach. Um, you mentioned about uh, um, about the level that he's at. Uh, what's one area that you think he's improved on from last year to this year? His ability – he understands football. He dreams and lives football. I think he has three or four fantasy teams. He, he's a kid that comes in my office every day with a new play he wants to run, and he has them drawn up. And most kids draw up plays that don't work. Augie draws up real plays. In fact, we named a couple of them after him. We ran them in games because they were so good. And mm -hmm. his ability to understand the game and his passion for the game is always going to make him way more successful than his physical attributes. And that's just not something you see every day from a kid. All college coaches would love to have a kid like that. <laughs> oh, for sure. For sure. Uh, so next, let's see who we have. Um, Adam Blumoff. Adam Blumoff. Adam Blumoff, another 2021. Uh, he's a left tackle for us. Second team all-league kid. 
tall and long, about six foot four, maybe six five. He put the first play on just run block and driving a guy. Okay. You see him here pass setting. You can see his footwork is going to be clean and good. He's going to, he's going to. And that was a good four, a division one kid, by the way. From, from defensive lineman, he's going to get attached and he's going to stay attached. And, and he really is a technician at left tackle. He started the season for us at about six foot four, maybe about 210 pounds. Now he's up closer to 230, but he's always going to run. He's going to pick up blocks. He's good in space. He's great in the screen game. And you can see, you know, when he gets on you, that's a wrap. His arms are so long and his energy is so high. Um, we love him as a pass protector. Oh, here he is pulling trying to get some work done. He told me, he said, Coach, anytime I'm pulling, it's a touchdown. And I love that confidence <laughs> in the offensive line. No doubt, Coach. Um, hey, Coach. Hey, Coach, I, I had some um, – a lot of um, offensive line coaches speak about being. That's one yeah. thing that's a big thing is uh, is uh, how is a kid's being. Speak a little bit about his bend and um, – some things that you expect um, that you would like to see him improve on and some strengths that he has. Well, he his, certainly his strength is in his footwork. You can see that he has the ability to stop. You you can see there he, he took on Travion Ford, who I think is one of the best pass rushers our town has ever seen. And and Travion beat him on the first play of the game, beat him inside, got a sack. And, and after that, Adam said, I'm dumb. He said, he's not beating me in there again. And he st stuck that right foot inside and got it in the ground and really caught him and got that bend in the spine you're talking about to really slow the pass rush and take away the strength from the defensive lineman's feet. Um, and he is he understands his technique. Now, it helps that he's six foot four and his arms are so long. So when he gets you at arm's length, you can't get back in his body. Those defensive linemen, they can't hand fight him because he's just too long and too athletic. Um, this is a kid that is a was a small forward in basketball. You know, he guarded the three. So he knows how to move. He's not a big, slow guy, but he is long and he is getting strong. Uh, that's the area that he's improving in is his size and his strength. Um, his, his football IQ is off the chart. His technique is already good, although he's constantly strengthening it. Um, he's an FCS kid for sure. Uh, every school in the Ivy League loves him already. Um, he's such a strong academic kid. He's getting recruited by MIT. We never sent a guy to MIT. Wow. But they called and said, hey, we like him. And I said, hey, I, I like MIT, man, because this dude is super smart. So um, I, I think he, he's got a tremendous upside, especially because of his length and his strength and his understanding of the game. Coach, talk, can we talk about his nasty streak? I see him on the field. He has a little nastiness in him. You I know he do. And if you, met him, if you met him, you would never believe it, but he does. He does. And when he gets on you, he is going to try to finish the play. Definitely. That's for sure. I can tell you this year, we played Westminster, and he went on. We, we, we were a little thin on the defensive line, so he ended up having to play defensive line for about half the game. And he was lined up against Benny Anderson and Big Powers over there. And that's about 700 pounds of man coming at you, you know. And, <laughs> and, and off, hey, he stood in there and he held up. And we ended up winning that in a one point game because they could not run his gap. They could not run it. And it was sheer willpower on his part there. So next up, we got Malachi. Malachi Chun, 2021 running back. Uh, he projects as a kid. He could be a, a D2 kid. Um, he could be a D3 kid at the top academic school. He is explosive with the football. And one of the things that we always tell our kids is if we can give Mal six or seven yards before he has to try to make somebody miss, there's a good chance he's going to get in the end zone. Okay? And that's what we always try to get him. If you see him, if he crosses a strike and nobody got to him yet, there's a good chance he's going to score. And, and he is so explosive. Um, he's got good vision. He's got good burst. And, and he finds the end zone. Uh, he doesn't need a whole lot of carries to end up with a bunch of touchdowns. How do you feel like he uh, he does making guys miss in the hole, Coach? Well, and, and he's not, a, he's not a, a thumper in there. He's more of a speed back, more of an elusive back. 
Um, he likes to have a little lateral space. So if, if you close him down and you're still in the hole, that's where it's tough for him. And that's why if he can get one step further, he's lights out. I love this play. He's in pass protection. He feels we're holding on to the ball too long. So he lets it go. Now watch this. This was going to be a 10-yard sack. Now he makes a guy miss, another guy miss, another guy miss, another guy miss. 24 yard game and that's really such a special play you know once he's in open space he's tough to get his hands on uh he's unconventional in his moves so you can't really predict him uh you can't watch his film and say oh he likes to give me two shakes and he's going to the right you never know what malachi is going to do except that he's going to make some plays yeah you talked about his vision and i looked at it and i saw a lot of patience as well right he, is, he would wait, sets up his block, let the big guys get in front and do their job, and then he finishes with uh, making people miss and with his speed. And, and that's what we've always felt like. If we can get him to the second level, if we can get him that it's just him and a linebacker four or six yards downfield, we, we think that's a double-digit game right there. So let me ask you this question, Coach. You know the, the biggest thing that uh, running back coaches want to know? Is he the full package? How is he in pass pro? Well, you saw him in pass protection. He always could improve, um, you know, and and he does a great job in, in, in our run scheme. You know, sometimes we love the jet sweep and we run the jet sweep. He's often the lead blocker. He is tremendous at that. Um, this was his first full year in the backfield. As a sophomore, we actually played him at receiver. So this was his first full year at his natural position at running back. Uh, his pass protection can still use improvement. Uh, his ball security can still use improvement, and he could get a little bigger. Those are the three things that he knows he's working on this offseason. Um, I see him at the next level. I think he already is, is poised to be an outstanding return specialist third down back. At a college right now, I think you could plug him in and he could do it. And the question is, can he grow himself in the beginning every down back? Uh, and I think with the work, he can. So next we got um, Xavier Silva. Xavier Silva, 2021 linebacker. This is a big dude, Silva. Uh, he says he's 5'11". I, I, I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure he's six feet or maybe 6'1". He says he's 5'11". He's definitely about 225, 230 pounds. You see him here coming off the edge. OK, look, he closes on the quarterback. He always sacks hands down and he pops the ball out an awful lot. He's so active near the ball. Now, on the other side, you can see him coming off the edge. He's going to squeeze the quarterback down when he sacks the QB. He said he's always going to make sure the QB does not recover the ball. If it comes out, he's going to pin that kid to him and give his teammates a chance. Uh, but he's active towards the quarterback when he comes loose off the edge. Now, here he is in the run game. Okay, stuffing up a play there. He came out with the ball on that. He, he he ends up with the football in his hands way more often than somebody should in the course of a regular football game. That just looks like a routine run. He actually stripped that ball out, and we got it. Okay, again, another run. Looks like a big run for their team. Here comes Silva. Guess what's going to happen? Ball's out again. And so you find him around the football all the time. We play him inside. We play him outside. He dislodged the ball there again. We had a chance to recover that one. Um, I think he gets it out again here, too. Uh, you'll see Silva all the time around the football, always getting that ball on the ground. He led us in sacks this year. He led us in forced fumbles and fumbles recovered. Yeah, you talk about it. A nose for the ball. He knows where it is at all times. It, you can teach that. But a kid has to have that instinct, right. and he has it. He, he has a natural instinct for getting that ball loose. Uh, next level, he's an Ivy League kid. He's got Ivy League schools talking to him, Brown, Columbia, Yale, Harvard. Uh, he's a tip-top student. Uh, and then he could certainly be a D2 kid at a lot of places. Hey, Coach, with, with being at a school that a lot of the kids don't rely on football, to take them places, right? How do you continuously are able to motivate these guys and have so many different players that have a possibility of playing at the next level? The, the kids are just so competitive. 
And they, they are. They're competitive in everything. They're competitive in the classroom, and they're competitive on the football field. And we try to build a culture over the years that we're going to be successful for life, football or not football. And a lot of them relate that to football because that's where they hear that message. So then they want to keep going with their football and being successful. But you're right. You know, so many of our kids are because of their academics are going to be able to go someplace on an academic scholarship if they wanted to. But I can tell you in their hearts, they want to keep playing that football for as long as they can. No doubt. Uh, next, we have uh, Mr. Will Jones. Will Jones, uh, another 2021. He's a safety. Missed most of the season. Uh, was out with a broken kneecap or some kind of stuff like that, if I'm getting it right. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's rehabbed it. He's back. He played the last three games. Um, you know, and, and he wasn't quite sure what he was going to do. But what I'll tell you he'll do is he'll come up and hit. He'll make plays on the ball, and he'll get guys on the ground. Um, Will Jones in, in this part of the season was 6'3", maybe 170 pounds, and now he's six foot four and he's about 205. And, mm -hmm. and he is really growing into his body and has a tremendous upside. Uh, we want to try to keep him healthy in this next year. Uh, his instincts are right. His physicality hasn't quite been there yet. Uh, and that's something that he's been working on through the offseason. And he's really dedicated himself to the weight room and to eating correctly so that he can get those things done. Gotcha. And uh, as far as the character about this kid, Will Jones, uh, what is he like off the field and, um, and what does he bring to your locker room? Uh, Will Jones is my only player I've had in the last couple of years that's really been seriously recruited by the service academies because he is a no-nonsense kind of guy. If you told me somebody had to go and protect me and protect this country from harm, and you said it's going to be Will Jones, I would say, okay, I can sleep at night because he's the kind of kid that you know if he has your back, he has your back, and he is all business and, uh, and, and a great human being. That's big-time stuff, Coach. Most definitely. Uh, so next... We have, see, we have here um, Simeon Williams. Simeon Williams, 2021 wide receiver. Uh, Sim is an explosive guy. Uh, you'll see him split out here. I'm going to hit him over the top. Uh, he's so fast. He got out of the frame there. He takes it through the house. Uh, if, if Sim gets room, he's going to go. Uh, we, we always try to, to extend him deep down the field. You're going to see this one again. He's going to be on the bottom on the right side running a post. Again, he outran the cameraman, uh, but he caught that one, did a little toe tap, pulled it in uh, for the TD. And, and Sim is an off-the-top receiver. And then we also love to find him underneath on the quick screens and the now screens and the in cuts um, because he has the ability to make guys miss in space. Uh, his hands are reliable. He also plays DB for us as well when we need him. But you can see, you know, he'll make the catch there. He'll take the hit. He'll get you the first down, move the chains, and then he's always going to pop right back up so his mom knows he's good. Uh, <laughs> he's him here. He's going to make the catch here coming across the middle, put a little shake on the defender, Ooh, okay, yeah. see what he can go and get. And, and Simeon Williams is not a big receiver. Uh, and so because of that, he's a D3 prospect. He's another top academic kid. So he's looking at Wash U, University of Chicago, uh, Pomona, uh, schools like that, um, Carnegie Mellon, Rochester, uh, schools that are those top academic schools, DePaul, uh, maybe even Rhodes. And, and he will be a steal at the next level because he'll bring such tremendous speed and athleticism and a know how to play football. Hey, Coach, could you speak a little bit on this route running as well, too? On What am I speaking on? His route running. Oh, now, what you'll see from Simeon is tremendous cuts in the routes. He'll get up to the top of his break. Uh, he, he can go inside. He can go outside. He can leap and catch the ball. Uh, you're going to see him run a lot of different routes. He gets that in our program. So we're not just a, a go team. You know, we're going to run the post. We're going to run the wheel. We're going to run the dig. We're going to run the pig. We're going to run the stick. We're going to run the curl. We're going to run a little bit of everything. And he is very accomplished in his routes. And you can especially see that when he gets the ball after the catch. 
Uh, he was an all league kid, a kick returner, second team all league kick returner, and and that's because of his ability to play in space, which you see in his film. So we're gonna get into some sophomores now in the twenty twenty twos. Josh hey, this, Clark. Oh. Hey, I will say this real quick before we uh, the twenty twenty two class for Burroughs is, is is pretty darn good. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. Let's get into it, man. Okay. So first we're gonna start off with um. Josh I think, Clark. I, I think I, yeah, we're gonna start with Josh Clark. He he only had one video up. Mm. So. I, I, he he's a, he's an offensive lineman. Oh, here's a picture of him playing a little defensive line. It looks like um, he's on the top left, number seventy six. Comes in there, makes a stop, makes a tackle. Uh, Josh Clark was our backup offensive and defensive lineman this year. He was our first guy off the bench. He was a sophomore. He's big. He's six foot three. He's probably two forty right now. Um, and and he's strong. And he's growing and growing in confidence. Um, and he's going to be a kid that is really a difference maker as a junior. He'll definitely start on our offensive line as, as a junior. Um, we didn't count – he wasn't a starter, but by the end of the season we counted him as a starter because we played him so much, uh, and he really, really just developed in his technique on that offensive line. He still needs to work on his footwork. He still needs to work on his hand placement. He gets called for a hole sometimes. Sometimes on defense he gets caught not coming out of his stance like he wants to, uh, but he's got a tremendous upside. Um, he could be an Ivy League type kid if he gets his skill work together where we think he's going to be. If not, he's got the size and strength to play Division II football. Most definitely. Um, next, we're going to get into Aaron Guller. Aaron Guller, Aaron Guller uh, started every game for us at right tackle. Everything that we said about Bloom off at left tackle is true about Guller at right tackle, except Guller is a little nastier. He is constantly getting guys on the ground. I don't know how he does it. It kind of reminds me of what was that movie, uh, Any Given Sunday, where the guy pulled out the gun. As soon as Guller gets up to the next level, he's going to be on the ground. I don't know if he got a gun in his pocket or what, but you'll see him in pass protection here, slowing down the pass rush. His feet are good. His hands are good. Let's just make the completion. Um, you'll see him in a minute, another clip. Give me one or two more before we come off of him. He's six foot three, uh, 205 pounds during the season. Here he goes. He's getting up to the next level. It looks like a routine block. All of a sudden, the guy's on the ground. He's trying to go get another block somewhere. And that's what's incredible about Aaron Guller. You know, you talk about a nasty streak. He definitely has it. He's tall. He's long. He's athletic. Uh, and he's in that same mold that we have at both tackles. Um, here he is against Miller Career. Boom, up to the next level pancake. I mean, what, just when you think the play's over, Guller is going to have a guy on the ground, and he does it enough that I mean, it just happens all the time. They got a guy on the ground, he's going for another one. He, he does it all the time, which is just incredible. You got to love an offensive lineman who blocks their, their, their man and then goes to the next level. He, he he's always back. going for seconds. You know, his mother said at home, it's time for dinner. He always going for, <laughs> seconds. He's going for seconds on the field, too. No doubt. No doubt. Right. So uh, he, he projects, uh, he's already got strong interest in the Ivy League, Yale, Harvard, Princeton. They love him. Uh, and if he's not at the FCS, then he's probably an academic Division three guy. All right, so next we got um Adisa Roberts. Adisa Roberts, Adisa. quarterback, wide receiver. Uh, he is a tremendously explosive athlete. On this first clip, he's at the top playing corner against Miller Career. Uh, he loses his man a little bit, gets beat over the top, runs back into the play, intercepts the ball by high pointing it and leaving his feet. Uh, you'll see that from him. Here he's on the bottom. Now he's split out wide on offense. Um Against Jennings here, uh, he's going to run a nice route to the outside. Ball's a little underthrown. He's going to one-hand it, take it into the end zone. He is an explosive athlete. Okay, back on the top of the screen now, uh, he's going to be going deep. Ball's a little underthrown, and you'll see him go up vertical, pluck it over to DB's head because his back was turned because he was beat. Uh, and Adi can just make every play that you'd like. Here he is matched up against St. Mary's. Okay, uh, receiver's going to run a post route. 
Adi's going to cover him, break on the ball, knock it away. You can leave him in zero coverage. Um, he projects as a corner at the next level. He's working on playing corner. Um, I think he's FCS. He's got to get a little more work done on his body, but his skill work is there. He's got such great speed. He's got tremendous explosiveness. He's got a great upside and a great attitude and work ethic. Yeah, he when you watch his film, he jumps out. He's a he's one of them explosive guys who can probably do a bunch of things on the football field. That's for sure. That's for sure. So next we're gonna go let's see what we got next. Uh Duncan Duncan Kloniger. Kloniger is our quarterback. I like him. Uh 2022 quarterback. And and since the season's ended, Duncan's put on about 20 pounds. Uh, you can see he's oh, got really? points in the pocket, um, and he puts the ball. His ball placement is outstanding, especially on his deep throws and anything over the middle. Uh, he's just going to be accurate, and he's going to be poised, and he's going to deliver the ball on time. He's going to take his one-step drop, make his decision. He's going to drop that one right in where only his man can get it. Uh, he he in the bucket. Throw after throw after throw. He'll and he's he he taking the hit. He'll take a hit. He'll still complete it. Uh, he doesn't take a lot of sacks, and he makes tremendous decisions with the football. Coach, what's your relationship hey, like Coach. with your QB? Um, I will tell you, uh, Duncan and I talk all the time. Uh, when school's in session, he's regularly hanging out in my office after lunch. We're drawing up plays. We're drawing up protections. Uh, since we've been on this coronavirus situation, we talk about twice a week, but he is an outstanding kid, and, and he's going to be a quarterback for somebody uh, at some kind of Division One school when it's all over. Hey, Coach, speak about um, a little bit about the transition of bringing him and making him the starting quarterback. As a freshman, we we knew he was good. We And we, we feel like we've had a lot of good quarterbacks over the years. You know, we had Trey Moore, uh, we had Tyler Foote, we had Nick Duncan, and all three of them went and became Division One quarterbacks in a row. And so we felt like we knew something about the position. And as a freshman, I thought, boy, this kid is going to be really good. But he was maybe five foot eleven to maybe 125 pounds. And we knew that, you know, this wasn't the right time. We needed to give him some body time. And, and that has, has worked in our favor. Uh, he did start two games for us as a freshman because of injury, and he played great. Um, but we really wanted to try to protect the young man's body and give him a chance to be able to grow and mature before he had to start taking some of those hits like you saw. Um, and so now uh, he's 6'2". He's about 170. Uh, he's a lot stronger. He's physically capable, but he's got a season and a half of maturity behind him now playing varsity football. Uh, and I think he's going to be tremendous. Our team rallies around him. The kids believe in him. And those are the kind of things you need to be a successful quarterback. So our, our last two probably don't need too much introduction. Um, Caleb Merritt. Caleb, he's so good. And it's interesting. When I spent some time watching these highlights today to get ready to talk to you guys, I was watching everybody else's highlights. Caleb was in everybody else's highlights. He's always <laughs> in the play. Here you can see we always feel like if it's one-on-one -on -one with Caleb, it's a touchdown. And his catch radius is so wide. You can't really see it in this angle, but he's fading to the sideline, and he's holding off that defender with his left shoulder, and he uses his body so well to help the quarterback complete the ball. Um, here he is on just a jailbreak screen. Uh, one of the things our guys say, they say call that all the time because they think if they get three blocks for him, he'll take it to the house. Uh, and his closing speed is really just fantastic. Um, Caleb's a big-time player, and, and we think oh, he can do all sorts of things on the offensive side and on the defensive side. Um, he goes up, high points the ball. He's got great hand control, ball skills, um, and body control. This is the first touchdown of the season for us, and Caleb caught this one. And I am just noticed the difference between his speed and everybody else on the field. And he gets here in a little bit of a scrum, and I don't know how he got out of it, but somehow he did, and that's just because wow. he's a playmaker. Yeah, and, and he even slipped on that play and still made an interception. What, on defense, we feel like, you know, if he picks it, he's probably going to score. 
Um, and and he he ended up with four picks. That one they called him out on the one inch line, um, and two of them to the end zone. And one he just ran out of bounds. And later on the ride home, he told me he said, "Dad, I regret it. I should have tried to score on that one because I think I could have." But we feel like defensively, he's always a threat to score. If you lob the ball up over the middle, that he'll go get it and get us six points. Hey, uh, Caleb also holds an offer from Kansas. Speak a little bit about the position that the coaches see him playing at the next level and um, and some things that he's uh, working on right now. He's been spending every day working on his routes and his catching. Uh, he, he catches hundreds of balls every day. Um, yeah, I can tell you because my arm is so sore because, I mean, I got to throw hundreds of balls every day. Uh, and he is he's working on his routes constantly. Uh, you have never seen somebody uh, do a release on his mother and sister so much as this kid. Um, I will tell you, he's very excited about University of Kansas. They like him as a wide receiver. They like him in the slot. They think that he's a matchup issue. You know, if, if you play a, a bigger linebacker type on him, he won't be able to keep up with Caleb's speed. And if you play the corner on him, they think those kids aren't strong enough to guard him. And that's kind of how we use them, too. Uh, and so that, that's where they really see him. Uh, he's talked to a bunch of different schools. It looks like he's an FBS recruit, which I know he's excited about. Um, and, and he has many schools interested, uh, Northwestern, Indiana, Mizzou, Wisconsin, Kansas State, et cetera. Um, and, and he is excited. Uh, to get to work and show them what he can do. That's good stuff. And uh, last but not least, we got Mr. Tyson. And this Ford. kid, who and Tyson Ford is probably your, um, well, not probably, but he's uh, the biggest recruit uh, oh, on the team. Speak a little, sure. speak a little bit about, um, speak a little bit about the shift in that, and let's break his film down, man. So you see Tyson there; he gets loose to the inside. And, and if he gets loose to the inside, he's going to get to your quarterback. And we've got a couple of stunts where we call him and try to gap him inside. You see it there again. And, and he's so fast and so strong and physical that he can cover two gaps. And even though he's a C-gap player, he can be an A-gap blitzer. Uh, you see him here against Luther North. They run a little option, and he gets the quarterback. But he's going to be nasty. He's going to finish the play. You know, the kid pitched the ball and whatever, and Tyson's like, well, that's it. This is my favorite play of the whole season. Uh, Tyson runs in here and just blows up everything, you know, and, and that was week one, and that's when Tyson found out that he could really play, and we really started to change some things after that. Uh, but he's six foot five. He's 225 pounds. He's tremendously fast, athletic, agile, and, and this is another kid who has just been doing nothing but work, 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 working on his craft of football since basketball was over. Uh, he called me this afternoon to tell me the stuff he was doing in his workouts and how excited he was and how he wants to make more of an impact offensively this year too. And I don't doubt that he can do it. Uh, but you can see as a defensive end, he's really a handful. He's a problem on one side of the ball. Uh, he makes you really want to go the other way, but you also don't want to turn your back to him. Uh, so with all those things said, he's a real problem for offenses to deal with. I like him because he can play the run and the pass. Well, that's for sure. And, and one of the things that I know he's been working on is his get off and getting his pad level lower in that running game. Um, sometimes he gets up because he's so tall, he gets his pad level up and those guys get up underneath him. And then he's in trouble. So he he said he's going to make sure that doesn't happen this time. He's going to dip and rip and keep his pad level low. I like uh I like Ford. He's a two sport athlete. I think that helps him a lot. Um, another thing I love about him is uh, his length. He has a uh, great length, and um, I think he's a I think he's everything that's advertised. And I'm looking forward to seeing how he comes back for junior year. Oh yeah, yeah. I I, I think for for our guys. I think we had a great season last year, only with a couple seniors on the roster. Uh, and with all these kids you've just seen doing the work they're doing and trying to mature and develop, I think we're really poised for a great season in 2020. Coach, how can college coaches get in contact with you? What's the best method of contact mm. um, for you to, to talk to talk about some, some college, uh, student athletes? Uh, best way to get a hold of me is on Twitter. Uh, at J.H. Merritt Jr., uh, best way to get a hold of me right there, coaches. Uh, you just send me a tweet, 
follow me. I'll follow you back, and then you can get a hold of me anytime that way. Uh, Tyler will tell you he gets me on Twitter all the time. I usually get back to him about two minutes. So uh, if you like any of our guys, we hope you do. Uh, yeah, just get at me on Twitter, and we'll certainly talk about it. Tyler, any last words? I'm going to say this. Uh, one, I apologize to the fans because my connection was a little bit bad today, but I really do appreciate Coach Merrick coming on and actually breaking down his guys. Um, to all the other coaches that would like to come on and uh, showcase your players, I think this is the platform that would be good for you, and I think it will be a chance uh, for everybody to get to see a little bit about what you know about your players as well too. So, Yes, and this is not for St. Louis. We're trying to do the whole Missouri. So Kansas City, the Boo Hill, uh, Columbia, and in between, um, the playbook is here for you and your and your uh, student athletes. Hey, Coach, I got one more thing. I got to put you on the spot real quick, all right? Yes, sir. Uh, what coach or what team would you like to see on the um, on the playbook possibly next or or in the future? Who I would like to see next? Yes, oh, sir. I got a whole lot of lists. I think I like to see. Look, I, I, I hope you got your notepad ready. I would like to see Luther North on there. I would really love to see my man B. Note and Westminster on there. Yes, um, I would like to see Kirkwood. I'd like to see Dismet. I'd like to see Eureka, CBC, St. Mary's, Shamanai. That's my St. Louis U High. That's my list right now. Hey, y'all heard it, man. Y'all got to come on now. Y'all got to come on now. <laughs> okay. You know, all, we all definitely going to be reaching out. All out. We I'll definitely going to be reaching out. Oh, Fort Zumalt North. You got to get Zumalt North. Oh, man. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They've been they've been a great program in this um, last decade, and we definitely want to put them on this platform. As for well. sure. Well, Coach Merritt, we appreciate you for coming on. Tyler, Dorian, this is The Playbook. We'll see you next week. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys doing it. Appreciate you, Coach. We out. Thank you.